Welcome back to FT Markets. The year is ending on a burst of volatility. We've seen a lot of investor concern about Russia, Greece, uh, tumbling oil prices and the rising dollar. And then there's the question of what the central banks will do next. So there's a lot for investors to worry about. With me to discuss her outlook for 2015 is uh, Stephanie Flanders, who's the Chief uh, Market Strategist at JP Morgan Asset Management. Stephanie, thanks for joining us. When we spoke a year ago and I asked you what your biggest worry for 2014 was, uh, you were worried most about central banks uh, being over hasty in tightening monetary policy. That obviously didn't happen. If I asked you what your big worry for 2015 was, maybe you'd say something similar. I think actually the big worry for me is that the divergence that we're seeing between the global economies is going to continue to grow over the next year or so and cause... To US versus the rest of the world. Well US, well, US and UK perhaps versus the rest of the world. That that divergence that we're sort of expecting to see uh, is greater than we expect and actually drives some instability in markets, particularly maybe in the currency market. I mean, if you think about a year ago, what we were looking at in terms of the stock market and the economy, we'd had, I think you've we got, I think we've got a chart shot. that just sort of shows, you know, you see where the FTSE's gone and where, the, where economies have gone in terms of the global uh, growth in GDP in cash terms. And you'd had uh, this long rally in equities that was built on Which an expectation, on right. yeah, built on an expectation of recovery that had only been partly fulfilled. And I think even when I was here this time a year ago, I think we said it was sort of showtime for the global recovery, that it was time for the, for the global economy to show that it actually could make good on those expectations. And we've seen the US and the UK make good on those expectations with decent above trend growth, but not Europe and Japan and emerging market economies also suffering. And I think that's maybe one of the nervous... We haven't seen that growth emerging towards the end. That creates risks market instability, I presume. I think so. And I think it also has set the stage for what you might expect in terms of monetary policy next year, because yeah. we think that policy is going to diverge. Actually, policy has been more or less the same, very, very loose in the major central banks across the developed world. Yeah, central banks, broadly, the big ones, have got it right in 2014. Do you think they'll get it right in 2015? Well, I think it could be. I think the Fed, as always, the US uh, Federal Reserve is going to be the central player in this. And if you look yeah, at what expectations expectations are for uh, long-term interest rates. We or had the happened. rally extending to the surprise of many people. Yes, year. I mean many people, everyone was expecting on, on balance that long-term interest rates would carry on going up in 2014. That isn't what's happened and I think that's partly fed into uh, the fact that central banks have certainly not jumped the gun in tightening monetary policy. The expectation that people have coming into 2015 is that you will finally see a somewhat of a rise, at least in the US, in long-term interest interest rates, uh, are partly as a result or coming along with the first rate rise probably in the second half of 2015. We might finally see those, uh, that rally turning. But it's interesting. So I guess one risk would be that having having not seen the rise, the much sharper rise that people were expecting in 2014, are we now too relaxed about the prospect for higher yields in 2015, at least in the US? If we're talking about divergences, uh, our currency chart showing how the uh, major currencies have performed this year does show that divergence quite strikingly. I think this is the point that I would worry about most if I'm looking forward to 2015, that the dollar, if you like, is the sort of moving part in all this and will be ref will reflect having been very strong throughout the second half of this year uh, on the back of expectations of higher interest rates in the US and also much greater economic strength. The, that's fine. It's actually helpful to the rest of the world, very helpful to Europe and Japan to have weaker currencies, but not if it actually is just reflecting uh, the fact that the US is the only game in town. Okay. I do worry a bit about that. I must ask you very quickly about geopolitical risk. Lots of <laughs> interesting sub-themes within that. But geopolitical risk haven't blown markets off course terribly in 2014, but there must presumably be a worry for 2015. Well, I think that the dramatic fall in the oil price has, has to raise some questions about some of the key regi regimes that you might worry about because of the, the, the instability that's caused by such a fall in oil prices. I mean, not just Russia, but Venezuela, other countries that are deeply affected by this. But I have to say the political risk for me going into 2015 is not so much around uh, Russia or the Middle East, it's around Europe. I think the, the simmering uh, political discontent with mainstream parties in Europe, we haven't seen it translate into 
genuinely anti-euro policies and governments yet. But I do think that's a worry looking forward maybe to end of 2015, 2016. Stephanie, thank you very much. So a note of gloom there about Europe, but maybe more optimistic about other economies. But of course, big risks out there as well.